Hello and welcome to another update video about ICP. ICP continues to move in this trend channel and hasn't really been affected by Bitcoin's recent move to the downside. Yeah, on Friday we had this um, sell-off and uh, yeah, I mean ICP isn't really affected. So it's still moving sideways basically in this trend channel. Um, nice face change on the ICP chart. ICP um, obviously is this uh, it's come from this long-term downtrend. And temporarily, at least, it's strong. Maybe it's going to stay strong. We'll see. For now, the trend is up and we have seen ICP move into this, well, into this trend channel from a, um, yeah, quite direct upside movement into something that appears now a little bit more choppy. So that typically indicates that the end of this initial five wave move is near. Not there yet, probably, and I will not confirm that the top is in place until we have seen at least a break below the um, ascending trend line here to the downside of the ascending price channel. Um, more reliable would indeed be a break below this last swing low at $10.30. I think that's what I mentioned in the last video as well. Really need to see a break below the 10.30 level to really confirm that a more lasting top has formed here. And that probably this wave two or alternatively B wave has started. I mean, the idea at the moment is, yeah, you know, we have, I mean, you visually, you can see that we have five waves up potentially. So that's enough for, a, for an in initial move to the upside. But you cannot just say, okay, the count is full. It will break down now. No, not really. So we need to get some signals from the market to really understand that an uptrend is over and that a local downtrend has begun or a correction. Now, many coins are currently in a correction. Well, ICP as well, but it's just sort of moving sideways. So it's not really affected by, by what many other coins are doing. So we're going to zoom in in a minute just to share with you here since this September low, we've seen probably a wave one, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four and a wave five or this was only the A wave of the wave five. This is a B wave of the wave five and the C wave is unfolding right now. You might ask why A, B, C? Well, it's quite clear because um, this mess here isn't really impulsive. You know, this initial move up was a three wave move. So I'm counting that as an A wave, a B wave and a C wave in wave one. This here is also a, a big mess um different ways of looking at this a b c so it's just um a combination of three wave structures then the wave four and i see this wave five also as an a b c there will be other interpretations okay there will be other interpretations that's to a degree subjective how we count these waves but that's why we use the fibonacci levels and overall you know the yellow box represents the main support zone if we get a deeper pullback this is still the zone that will remain relevant between $4.10 and $8.32. We also have support levels in between at $6.77 and $5.51. And as long as the $4.10 level is holding, overall, I would be looking for further upside in the third wave or a C wave. You know, um, If this is an A, B, C or a 1, 2, 3, which would result also in a 4 and 5, too early to say that um, both short term bullish, but obviously very short term, we might see a dip here, but not yet. You know, I w again, I won't confirm that until we at least have a break to the downside of the ascending price channel. The channel seems to support currently the price. Yeah. Now what's going on here? I mean, as I said, we probably have an A wave to the upside. Looks to me uh, as if this A wave is also an ABC structure. That's fine. Then the B wave down. And now the C wave to the upside should be a five wave move. And we might have completed the wave one, might have completed the wave two. Wave three might just be starting, then a four and a five. That's how I would like to see this um, if it continues to move up, obviously, and holds the $10.30 level. That's sort of at the moment my wave count. Obviously, it's a fairly unreliable count because the chart history is so short. I can really only count this chart um, of the September lows. So chart history is still quite short. So it lacks some predictive powers. The predictive powers of Elliott Wave are limited if a chart is quite short in, well, history. You could say, okay, but it launched already a while ago. It did, but it's only been in a downtrend. So that's not really helpful for Elliott Wave analysis. 
But also if we disregard Elliott Wave and just use the price channel, I mean, this is currently moving up um, in this price channel. The main Fibonacci level here was respected recently. That was at $15.80. So a break above that level is needed to push into this next target area, which is between $19.64 and basically $25. There's also the next main FIB level uh, on the chart. That is at $23.68. So I would say if we get above $15.74, we can start to look up towards $23.68. For now, the uptrend is still unfolding, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's currently just sort of consolidating in the very short term. But there's at the moment no um, confirmation that this uptrend is over, even though minimum expectations for a five wave move up have already been fulfilled. That obviously doesn't mean it has to pull back now. We need to see a signal first, right? Um, until then, the trend is up and extensions are expected. That's my update about ICP. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also, make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.